Well, folks, I guess we're not at the Marine Corps Marathon this morning running, so uh, I hope uh, if, if I can't get you running and I don't uh, put you to sleep, maybe you can uh, gain uh, a few insights on the veteran terrain and uh, the whole approach to working with vets at this time. Uh, it's an interesting period in uh, American history and in world history. We've uh, passed a decade of war, and uh, I, I wonder uh, if we're going to find any type of solutions. Uh, I, I know that it's important to look at general semantics at, at this period of time because although we may not find solutions, we may find ways to engage the issues in a constructive manner. So today I will discuss general semantics and veteran narratives. Who is the client? This is the great clinical question asked in clinical consultation, clinical supervision, critical incident reporting, and clinical team meetings, and overpriced clinical textbooks at my school, Columbia University. From an expansive dis discourse analytic approach, I look at this question, and I cannot help but to think of Alfred Korzybski's etc. journal piece, a veteran's readjustment and extensional methods. Here we have Korzybski presenting the client, but not as a traditional clinical case study from a Wallerstein clin clinical educational frame. Instead, a vulnerable educational frame is shared to clinicians and the larger society. This frame offers great empowerment, multiplicity, creativity, and fluidity. In Korzybski's piece, the client is not merely the objectified narrative of a combat veteran with invisible wounds of war, like in most psychotherapy cases going back to Freud. Instead, the Polish count and also combat war veteran Alfred Korzybski uses his autobiographical narrative of war and his post-war experience to describe combat trauma. He does not pontificate the is of combat trauma. He authentically describes combat trauma from his life experience and events of pain and healing. He uses transformative language by describing combat trauma recovery as a reconversion, not meaning adaptation. Korzybski discusses a way to heal via using general semantics, but he does not center the power on himself nor on the clinical specialists, nor on the providing system. He even uses the famous specialist, Lieutenant Colonel Kelly, a prominent clinician from the US Army who basically uh, was the chief consultant for the World War II theater. Lieutenant Colonel Kelly used general semantics with uh, troops heading over to Normandy for the D-Day invasion and uh, worked with, the, with over 7,000 troops and used general semantics in a very practical manner to assist troops in dealing with war and in post-war recovery. This is important to look at because this is a surrender of power and it also utilizes abstractions of war and healing from a deeper level. 
Korzybski offers a dialogical enmeshment of narratives to open dialogue about the vicissitudes of war and combat trauma, not just from the story of the case study of the World War II veteran featured in his article, Korzybski shares his own challenges from his war and his recovery. He explains how he used general semantics and how the veteran in the case study used general semantics to deal with post-war issues. Now, how does Korzybski use general semantics for himself? Well, Basically, he, he used it as, as a troop and uh, being involved in uh, some intelligence work, he basically carried some documents and always had a fear in the combat zone uh, of, of, of being caught and uh, being stripped of his clothes and uh, having these documents uh, get given to the enemy. Well, uh, after the war, Korzybski talks about his uh, combat, combat war experiences and his readjustment experiences as being very difficult in that he would even uh, sleep at night with uh, his hand over his chest. Now, after really abstracting and putting himself in a position where he was thinking through this issue, he was able to kind of stop this habit of sleeping with his hand over his chest. And he was able to be less guarded and be much more rational. This is just one, this is just one example. It's also interesting that in Kordzipski's journal piece, he talks about acute combat trauma issues that this uh, veteran who's featured in the case study in, in the piece is just describing issues of dead bodies and uh, the witnessing of dead bodies and uh, rice over the dead bodies uh, in the Japanese islands during, during World War II. Now this veteran uh, ended up using general semantics and after, after some time, he was able to kind of distinguish between uh, that horrid war experience and not having a fear for um, e eating rice. Now, that, this sounds somewhat simplistic, but you, you've got to understand uh, these acute issues are very important to look at within a veteran who's recovering from war. It's not so much the, the large macro sensationalized issues that are described in the New York Times. It's not so much the spectacles that are on websites describing the uh, victimized veteran, but it's, it's the small micro issues that affect the nervous system, the ontological unfolding of life for the veteran on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think uh, Korzybski offers uh, you know, a great uh, way to engage the problem slash problems. So I took something away from Korzybski's piece. Not only did I provide uh, somewhat of a, a, a hermeneutics for myself and maybe for you, uh, but you know, I was able to kind of like reflect on the piece and uh, interpret it and deeply uh, look at it and say, how was my experience in Iraq? Uh, affected in, in a way where my daily life now is uh, at times uh, a bit chaotic. And yes, when I take a break and I abstract deeply, the sounds, the loud sounds in this crazy city aren't as loud for me. I don't get caught up with the worry of worries. In other words, I don't worry about worrying. And I think that the big thing with combat and war is that, yes, there are horrors, 
But at the same time, there are secondary reactions that Korzybski talk, that Korzybski uh, engages, and, and these secondary reactions can be very self-defeating for the veteran. And uh, if we look at ways to think through these uh, secondary reactions, we can maybe have uh, a better life. And uh, I know you all are um, skeptic of Aristotle, <coughs> but I will say that eudaimonia and happiness are, are something that, that maybe a veteran can look at by using uh, general semantics to maybe have a different life, maybe to have a reconversion. And, and so I leave you today with looking at 1954 and the famous Carl Rogers, the famous therapist who at one time was also connected with general semantics. He made an interesting comment. The, cli the client knows what direction to go, what problems are crucial, and what experiences have been buried. And this is an important quote to look at because Rogers in the Etc. Journal wrote about creativity and I think if we go back to that article and use creativity in uh, combat trauma work, maybe we can appreciate a uniqueness within the individual. We can have uh, an expansion in understanding experience. We can look at the locus of evaluation within the individual and maybe this can be efficacious. So Rogers' eight page piece in etc. I think epitomizes the simplicity of general semantics versus his 200 page book on veteran readjustment. So I leave you today and I appreciate you listening and if there are any questions, ask away.